What's up, I'm Tyler Casey, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my four favorite lenses to use with the GH5. The lenses I'm gonna be talking about today are the lenses I use on all my projects. So if you guys see any of my work, definitely one of these lenses was used. So let's get into it. The first lens I'm gonna be talking about is the 12 to 35 Lumix. Uh, this is the first generation, they had the second generation as well. Uh, I had this originally with my GH4. The thing I like about this lens is it's a native lens. It fits right onto the GH5 or GH4 with no adapter. It has great autofocus if you ever want to use it for photos. I use this a lot on my gimbal because the autofocus is all right on the GH5, so sometimes it works good. It has quite a lot of range, so as you see, like when I, I can go all the way from 12 millimeters to 35. With the crop on the GH5, it's pretty punched in at 35, so it looks pretty good. I'm gonna show some examples of times I've used this lens, so I've gotten some really great shots with this lens. Also, if you look on the side, it has Power OIS, so this works with internal body stabilization with the GH5. So you get super smooth handheld shots. This is really awesome. Another great thing about this lens is, as well with the GH5 body, is it's weather sealed. So this lens is weather sealed as well. So paired with the body, you can go film out in the rain, you can film out in the snow, you can do all sorts of stuff with this lens. So this is a great lens to buy. It's a great starter lens, and I've seen plenty of great music videos shot on this. Um, I would also use this lens if you want to get photos as well. So it's a great all-around lens to start off with to figure out what you need next. So one thing you do have to purchase with the GH5 if you want to use Canon lenses is the Metabones XL Speed Booster. What this basically does is it basically allows you to adapt Canon glass to the Micro Four Thirds mount. The pros of this is you can add all your previous Canon glass onto your GH5 now and you also get a half a stop of light. Cons of this is you kind of lose autofocus and it's also $600. I definitely think the Metabone Speed Booster is worth it. Mine actually broke recently and I sent it in, but it didn't come back in time, so I had to purchase another one, and it's definitely worth it. I love my Metabone Speed Booster and I use it on almost every shoot. My next favorite lens is everyone's favorite lens. It's the 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma. This lens is a constant f1.8. So when I say constant, it's basically what you notice a lot on like, let's say the kit lens with the T3i, it's a 3.5 to 5.6. When you zoom in, your aperture is actually gonna change, so your image is gonna get darker. With a constant aperture like the Sigma 18 to 35, when you zoom in at f1.8, it's gonna stay at f1.8, it's not gonna change on you. Uh, this lens has great build quality. I probably had it for about two to three years now. Never had any problems with it. Very sharp lens, I'm shooting on it right now. The colors that come out of this lens are great. I eventually do wanna get the 50 to 100, but it's just pretty expensive and it's a really heavy lens. But I would highly recommend this lens. It is kind of similar to this, but the range is a little bit different because we have the Metabone Speed Booster, so it gets a little bit wider. I wouldn't really trust the autofocus through the Metabones on this lens, just because it's a little bit slow on the GH5, so definitely if you're looking for something with autofocus, I would look for something with a native mount, definitely not something that's going through the Metabones. What's also awesome about this lens is, many of you may already know, is with the Metabones you get a half a stop of light, so this lens actually goes all the way down to f1.1 which is super shallow depth of field, which is really hard to focus, but it's still cool to have. So this is usually my go-to lens if I ever film anything low light with the GH5, whether I'm filming a wedding or if I'm shooting some stuff outside or some handheld stuff, it's a really awesome lens and it can really help the GH5 in the low light. Next up, I'm gonna talk about this wide angle lens. I've had this one for a while. This is the Tokina 11 to 16. I mainly use this lens for real estate shoots and sometimes when I wanna capture some wide shots. Wide shots are really good to establish where you are in a scene, or maybe if it's a really intense song, you can really get some crazy angles and kind of distort the image a little bit. This lens, I believe, is a 1.8. I've used this lens on most of my real estate shoots. It's nice to be as wide as you can inside on a real estate shoot, so you can really show off the features in the home. This lens with the Metabones is really wide. You get a little bit of vignetting, but usually if you punch into like about 12 millimeters, you're not gonna see any of that vignetting. This is probably my favorite lens right here. This is the 85 millimeter Rokinon. This lens right here is only $300 and it's super sharp and awesome. 
I use this on lots of performance takes. Usually like doing medium shots with this. I'm gonna show tons of music video footage where I've used this lens. This lens is really fast too. It goes all the way down to a T1.5. So it's really fast. You'll even get another half a stop of light through the Metabone Speed Booster. So that's one of my favorite lenses right there. And it's a cinema version. So if you do have a follow focus, it has the nice wheel already built into it. So you don't have to mess with that. That's a long lens, so what it does is it compresses the space. It helps put your subject closer to the background. So if you shot your subject by a bridge and you filmed it or a cityscape, it's gonna kind of compress the space and get you a really cool looking shot. But definitely it's a great lens for performance shots on music videos and any other type of long shot you need. It's a prime lens, so it's not gonna zoom. It's fixed at 85 millimeters. It's a great lens to have in your backpack. So those are the four main lenses I have right now. Once I switch those out, I'm definitely looking to try a lot more lenses, rent some, and then purchase some in the future. So I'll definitely talk more about lenses. The last tip I'd like to say is it's always good to buy Canon glass and use it on your GH5. You can use Canon glass on lots of different cameras like the Sony, you can use them on RED cameras. So it's always great to invest in great Canon glass like the Sigma 18 to 35 and then be able to use it on a RED later down the road. So that's all I have today. If you guys found this helpful, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can hear the next video I have. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. I'm Tyler Casey and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.